Welcome to the March episode of Hemfield Happenings. Today, we will continue to celebrate Hemfield Happenings' 25th anniversary while also looking at what's new in Hemfield. We'll be taking a look at Junior Achievement's BizTown, Hemfield's involvement in Giant's new fill a plate program, the high school's new club period, and the up and coming girls wrestling team. That and much more on this episode of Hemfield Happenings. Over the last 25 years, many students have gone through the ComTech program and worked on Hemfield Happenings. Savannah Miller caught up with two former ComTech students to see how the program influenced their lives after high school. Just as it did for most, COVID threw off some senior plans. But two specific ComTech 2020 graduates still managed to come out with success, both in and out of a college setting. Abby Minnick and Ava Keller were both members of the program for all four years of high school and completed six video production classes. Now, they set off to find how they can implement their skills in their future. I am going to be a junior now at Penn State University, and um, I study astrophysics, planetary sciences, and film. And so kind of my goal with that is to eventually be able to take these topics and um, be able to explain them in a way that people can understand last year. But I started this YouTube series called Asking Questions at Hempfield. I kind of wanted to use that platform to like educate people. Abby has traveled her ideas between schools and has built a great foundation at Penn State for years to come. At I got this email from this club that I joined called PSN TV. And um, they said that they were looking for new show ideas. I get in contact with the person in charge of this. And I kind of give my whole spiel about, you know, what I did and sent some links to the videos that I did in high school. And so from then on, they helped me kind of like build up like where I wanted to go. Not too long after starting Asking Penn State, Abby was awarded with the Davis Ethics Award. They thought that um, me try wanting to spread this knowledge um, and bringing to light some of these researchers and students and professors, um, they, they really appreciated that. After planning to attend a college in film major, Ava Keller's life fit a new path. Right now, I'm currently a wedding videographer at a wedding company, and I have my own business where I do editing and branding videography for other small businesses and creatives. I wanted, originally, my plan was to go to Woodbury University in California for film. Um, unfortunately, the pandemic kind of threw things for a loop for me, uh, made me rethink my entire plan and just if it was worth it as far as money, going to California. I decided to switch my major to psychology and I ended up finding an internship at Complete Weddings and Events. I'm getting so much more experience in the field than I would be going to a school. Going to a school would have been a wonderful experience. I think about it all the time, wish I could have, but it's just, it wasn't in the cards. I mean, ComTech was where I started. I would not be anywhere where I am without ComTech. My starting skills, like, started editing with ComTech, you know, videography with ComTech, just being in a video environment, um, all from ComTech. Though they each took their own way after leaving the walls of Hemfield, they continue towards great success and continue to influence the students here. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Savannah Miller. Keller, we're ready for you.
While Hempfield Happenings is in its 25th year, there are several events and programs in the Hempfield School District that are much newer, such as Junior Achievement's BizTown. Joey Strigel reports on how the BizTown program helps sixth graders learn important, lifelong adulting skills. Okay, so citizens, I want to start the opening town meeting by saying what a wonderful job you're doing. I Growing up is a lot of responsibility. From paychecks to taxes, to so much more, it can be overwhelming. That's why East Petersburg Elementary School's sixth graders are here at Junior Achievements BizTown. BizTown is a simulated town where we invite fifth and sixth graders to come and we let the school decide which grade level it's best for. But they come and they run the town for the day. Each business, we have 15 businesses, have a CEO, a CFO, and other employees. Their goal as um, a business in the town is to work as a team and get their job done. We have a busy day ahead. From mayors to meteorologists, in BizTown, every job is important. My job as the mayor is I make sure all the businesses are running smoothly. I'm in charge of um, City Hall. So it's, it's very stressful, um, my job, but I enjoy everyone seeing everyone walking around. Um, and I know that everyone's going to do a great job. I know they are. I figure out the weather and I get interviewed about it. Through working these jobs, students learn important life lessons. BizTown teaches our sixth graders more about financial literacy, um, teaches them how a town is run, um, kind of gives them an idea of what it's like to be an adult. They learn like general, kind of like common sense financial literacy skills. They learn what a check register is, they learn how to balance their checkbook, um, they learn about working together in business teams, so having to problem solve and figure out how a machine works or how to enter the information in the database to get their bills paid as CFO. And they also just kind of learn like what it means to be a smaller part of a larger community. The students got more than the life lessons they learned out of BizTown. They also came out with lifelong memories. My favorite part of BizTown would have to be um, I got to do blood, um, blood samples. So I think the bank is pretty cool. Probably um, writing the articles because it's just fun to write them down and um, get information about the different like businesses. Getting to help out with everybody, getting talking to people. BizTown is able to give students an opportunity to learn both financial and civil life skills that they'll need for their adult lives. For Hempfield Happenings. I'm Joey Strigel. As exciting as BizTown seems, it is only one of many programs that Hempfield has recently become involved in. Judah Vaughn investigates one such example, Giant's new food donation program, Philoplate. Giant has had a partnership with Hempfield for a while called the Roundup Program, where at the register you can round up your total and that little bit will go to Hempfield through a check and that money will go to families in need. But now there's a new program called the Philoplate Program, where students can donate food directly to Giant and that food will go to families in need. Giant has had the Roundup Program since 2021 and has helped raise over $1.5 million to help families in need. Now they've started the Philoplate Program, which is taking a different approach. Um, well, the roundup was um, if you wanted to round up your amount and then we uh, would be issued a check and then we can use that um, for the program needs. And the uh, fill a plate is where people actually donate uh, food, non-perishable food, and then district uh, divides it out and then delivers it to the families. There are a lot of factors that go into who will be receiving the food donation. That responsibility falls onto the social workers who directly work with the families. Um, that process is, um, gets handled with the social workers. They work with the families that are in the most uh, financial need. And then uh, from there, that's who they decide which families get it. The idea behind the program was to give food directly to families who might need it. Unlike Roundup, where the families would be receiving money, Philoplate is aiming to directly fight child hunger. Uh, well, we were hoping to give actual food to uh, families and they can use it however they uh, feel the need to, whenever they need to. I mean, kids are here a lot, but they're not here the whole day. So if they could use it for dinners or anything to help uh, lessen the burden of the family with food insecurity is ideal. 
Giant is planning on continuing both of these programs. The Philoplate program and Roundup programs have both ended, but will be starting up next January and February. Both of the programs have been a great success and have benefited the Hempfield community in a lot of ways. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Judah Vaughn. One of Hempfield School District's longtime administrators, Dr. Brosman, has recently become the official principal of Hempfield High School. He is here to join me today in the studio. How are you doing, Dr. Brosman? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Of course. Yeah, th uh, thank you for coming. Uh, so to start this, I just wanted to ask, um, how long have you been working in and studying education? Sure. So I've been at Hempfield. This is my 19th year. So I've been 19 years in education. Before that, I did four years of undergrad studying education. Um, actually, my first 10 years at Enfield High School were as a chemistry teacher. So I used to teach out of room 232 where Mr. Nachisti is now teaching. Um, and then from that, I transitioned to grade level principal and then recently was named as the uh, head principal for the high school. Great. So as the head principal, what uh, responsibilities does that entail? Um, so <clears throat> it's a little bit different responsibilities than the grade level principal, um, more overseeing the whole building. Um, this is a very large building with lots of students and staff and clubs and organizations. So uh, more involvement with our extracurriculars and co-curricular activities, building usage, um, the overall mission and vision for the building, getting and, the, and scheduling, um, having more say as far as which classes run, which ones don't, getting, working out that master schedule. So those are, those are some of the big differences. And then also in this role, kind of serving as the face of the high school for public events and, and making myself available to the public. That feels like a, you know, so many grand responsibilities over a, uh, that, that would stretch over a long period of time. So I'm curious, what does a singular day as the head building principal look like? Uh, no two days are the same. Uh, you try to schedule meetings, um, but not have your day be so packed because there's always things that pop up and we need to be available for staff and students and parents and um, you just never know what's going to come through the door. So there's no such thing as a typical day. Um, that is what makes uh, high school administration attractive to some people is, you know, it's never boring, um, but you really have to be able to adapt and adjust on the fly. and and still try to meet everything. Um, but this year, one typical part of our day is, you know, most of us are spending two hours in the cafeteria trying to be available for staff and students to connect or, and uh, deal with things as they come up. So Dr. Brosman, what is a change you're excited about upcoming at Hemfield High School? So one big change that we have coming up that I'm excited about, a little nervous about, but I'm confident it'll go well, is um, we're going to be using a new tool called Class Choice. Uh, to help students with course uh, selection and scheduling for next year. So uh, currently students are going to be using class choice to input their course selections, what they want to take next year, and that's pretty standard to what we've done in the past. Um, but the new part, the part I'm excited about for class choice with the tool is once we build the schedule, um, we're going to have windows of opportunities where students will be able to go into their schedule and look at what other courses are available and they'll be able to adjust their schedules themselves without having to meet with a guidance counselor. Um, so in essence, they're going to cut out the middleman, um, be able to do their own scheduling adjustments and uh, ultimately this is hopefully going to free up our guidance counselors a little bit too to be able to do other counseling work um, that our students need. So uh, it should also help students to get a better handle on the courses that they want in their schedule based on what's available. So I'm excited to have this rolled out and offer this to our students and, and see the impact it's able to have on our schedule next year. Great. So that's uh, one of, I'm sure, many changes you'll end up making. And uh, that leads me to um, sort of uh, an important big question. What would you say is uh, your mission statement? So. Our vision for Hempfield High School is to create a place that people are excited to be a part of. Um, we went through the pandemic, uh, schools and, you know, we were all at home and, you know, getting back into school was very difficult. It's important to me that our staff and our students want to be here. One of the new opportunities we've created um, for increased connection between students and teachers is the Win 5 Club period and allowing 
teachers to share some of their interests with students and students to explore some of their interests in some of those clubs. And I have no doubt that those connections are going to lead to helping students find their way and explore new opportunities. There are things that are here for them that they're interested in, that um, this is someplace they want to be a part of, both curricularly and extracurricularly. Um, the more people are connected to the high school, the better experiences they'll have. So that's really our vision for the high school. Um, and as far as a mission for the high school, um, I, we've talked to our staff, we talk about it every month, is you know our mission, getting back to the basics of what we need to be doing as educators, is we need to be helping others be better. Um, so that looks different for everyone. That could be being a better student, being a better community member, being a better athlete, being a better musician, like that can be in so many ways. But our core mission is to help others be better. That's excellent. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Dr. Brosman, our new building principal. Thank you for having me. Now on to another great feature from this episode of Hemfield Happenings. <laughs> here at Hemfield High School, its students have a lot of accessibility in what they can do, whether it's the five pathways to graduation or with its new clubs. Because this is the first time in probably 10 years that we've thought about having clubs for all students during the school day. Um, we have over 70 clubs available for our students to choose from and to make a selection and to find something that they are interested in and to hang out with other kids and an adult here at the building that has the same interest. We do have a variety of clubs and again it's based upon what our staff members are interested in what they have a passion about. We have eSports, which is a new club as well, and that's actually one that is um, traveling throughout the county and also the country where students are able to participate and it's an actual sport now as well. So that's something up and coming, and so we've jumped on that bandwagon and have added an eSports program here at our school as well. I think it was really organized. So it really started off like kind of shaky, but then when we got in here, it was really organized. Everyone got along. It's a really supportive environment. Um, I would say it would be actually being in a club that's brand new. It's a club that now me and the other students and Mr. Lead get to make our own. It's not an established club or an established organization or anything. I'm just joining it to be a part of it. It's something that now we will create and define what it will become in the years to come of the school. So the biggest element about this, which we've already started establishing from day one, is creating a community and a bond. And I think with this crew, what makes it extremely unique is that the thing that brings them together most is a love of video games. Now, obviously, in terms of esports, we are competing in two particular games. Um, but the goal here is really to develop that community, bring kids together that normally wouldn't be together, whether it's in classes, whether it's grade levels, um, whether it's just in general interest. I mean, we've got kids from different walks of life, uh, and this really provides a social club to bring them together where they can share in their love of video games but also kind of um, be able to compete in that realm as well which is something that's very new uh, in terms of competition because esports is a relatively new thing not extremely new um, but it's it's just nice because the community is already starting to form so we're really excited to see how that kind of builds uh, my favorite part about the esports club is all the people getting together their interests it's a nice environment where everyone's trying to achieve the same goals even though there are a lot of great things about the eSports club, there are still many responsibilities that come with being a part of this club. So given that this is not just a club, it is also representative of an actual eSports team. Um, essentially, it's not something that becomes available for students to just click and go into. So ideally, we are looking for students that are A, interested in video games, but more specifically, uh, ones that have experience and have actually done their own um, kind of hours and put in the time and practice for Rocket League and League of Legends. So that kind of limits because there are students that love playing video games uh, and they might want to play competitively, but those are the only two games we have available. Um, it's also a lot of buy-in from the parents so we have a number of meetings ahead of time uh, in order to ensure that the parents are willing to allow their children to do this particular club um, and this is a club that maintenance as a member also requires academic standing as well so whereas the other clubs it's more of just interest um, this is interest but there's also a lot of other things in order to maintain your space um, because again we want to make sure that academics come first um, and that we are putting together a group of students who uh, are legitimately interested in esports and competing in esports and that and it's, while it is a social club, it's also at the end of the day, we are going to be competing against other schools. As of right now, the eSports club is just a simple school club, but Mr. Lead has huge plans 
to make the esports club something so much more. So this year really is about trying to establish what the foundation of the team is going to be. So really it's getting kids in the same space, playing the same games, seeing from a technological standpoint what we're capable of doing and time-wise what we can commit to it. Um, but this year really is gonna be about exhibition. So the goal really is to get the kids playing, get them a feel for who's the better of the players, some technique, have some conversations, study some ways to be better, become better players, uh, and then setting up exhibition matches with local schools around the IU 13. My goal for next year is that we are going to actually enter an actual competition league uh, where we're going to compete against teams all across Pennsylvania uh, in those games and really just try and see what Hemfield can do and how we measure up against some of the other clubs and teams out there that have actually been in, in operation for a few years now. And with new clubs like the eSports Club getting added to Hemfield's club selection, Hemfield High School really does give its students a wide variety of choices to make sure that there is a club that can suit their interests. From Hemfield Happenings, this is Thomas Williams. As said, Win 5 is one of the newest additions to life here at Hemfield High School. Along with the club periods, the school district and students alike are finding new ways to encourage people to explore their interests. One way this is being done in Hemfield Athletics is the girls wrestling team and the planning for its future at Hemfield. Wrestling at Hemfield has been very popular for many years, but starting next year, there will be a new girls wrestling team. It just got approved this year, so by next year's wrestling season, it'll be a full approved team. So any girl that's interested can be like, I wanna join, and they can just show up and we'll get them like set up. This new team is all thanks to Hemfield's athletic director, Mr. Landis. Yeah, I came from Warwick and we added this last year uh, at Warwick. And when I started here at Hemfield, it was one of the things that was discussed even through the interview process that this was something that we wanted to add here. Uh, Hemfield has a really strong elementary program with their girls wrestling, so the foundation's there. And so we went through the process here to, to get this approved as a sport uh, at Hemfield. While the team won't officially start till next year, interest in the team is rising and there is already a committed member. Team. So as of now, it's just me and I've been practicing with surrounding schools just trying to get time in. But as we roll into like summer, we'll have things called like open mats where girls can come in and just try it for a day and see if they're interested in that. Any girl at Hemfield High School is welcome to join the team, athletes and non-athletes alike. I think anyone that has an interest that uh, isn't doing another winter sport should give it a look. Um, we've found that uh, if you track the, those that are involved in girls wrestling, some of them are athletes in other sports, but there's also a lot of girls that are, are finding uh, their niche kind of in girls wrestling that don't, don't have any other sport they participate in, and uh, it's something that they seem to enjoy. Um, so that's why I said we're just going to kind of open it up there and, and see if Hopefully some people just try it out and see if it is something that they, they enjoy. Over the summer, there will be great opportunities for girls inside and outside of the district to try wrestling at Hemfield. School, any girl in Hemfield who wants to wrestle on the girls team is more than welcome to. We will have what they call like scrimmages or open practices where other schools can come in just so you can see other competition but it will try to be just Hemfield just for the first couple years so we can see what it's like. But Hemfield isn't the only school around that's adding girls wrestling to their athletics. There's multiple schools in the area like Penn Manor, Manheim Township, McCaskey, Warwick. They all have full girls lineups, which is 26 girls at minimum. It's growing. It's, it's the fastest growing sport in our state. Uh, this area is really strong too. If you look at District 3 and even our league and you look at the schools that have added girls wrestling, this is a hotbed of, of schools that have added it. It's one of the most popular areas. Um, it's not a surprise. Uh, this area in the state of Pennsylvania is well known for the sport of wrestling. Many female athletes like Maddie agree that having an all-girls team could help raise interest in the sport and allow for current female wrestlers to compete more locally. I think I would benefit more being in the room with the guys just because that's I've grown up wrestling that way, that's what I know, and they push me a little harder. But I think for any girl that doesn't want to wrestle guys and it's like absolutely not, the girls team will be very, very beneficial to them. The girls wrestling team being established creates opportunities for girls to try out a new sport and high school female wrestlers to wrestle for Hemfield. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Charlotte Robards.
Welcome to Hemfield Highlights. This year's spring musical, Peter Pan, would not have been possible without the help of those behind the scenes. Emma Spiker looked into the makings of Hemfield stage crew. Stage crew is a group of volunteer students who use their determination and teamwork to help build the sets for performances. Uh, stage crew is responsible for supporting the uh, performances here at Hempfield. So we build the sets, we paint the sets, we um, move the sets around the stage during the actual performance. We're the ones who help with the lighting and the sound and any special effects, any properties or props that are used during a performance. Basically, we have the acting, we have the singing, we have the dancing from the cast. Everything else is stage crew. Even though every aspect of stage crew is important, Tech Week is by far the most critical time of the pre-show process. Tech Week is the week that leads up to the show. Um, it starts on a Friday before the actual show opens. From what I heard, it's pretty stressful. There's a lot of running around. Everyone has to be super focused. We choreograph all the movement of this set piece goes here and this, this person is going to move this over here. It's really important and really serious and if something messes up it's gonna ruin everything. The musical this year brings its own unique set of challenges. Uh, so this year we're doing Peter Pan uh, which is gonna be a fun show for everybody cast and crew involved. In addition to our normal jobs of the lighting person and the person who flies in set pieces, they work the rails as we call them, and we have stage crew members that move set pieces around. We now have flyers. So we will have people hooked into harnesses flying around on the stage, so that's going to be another element that we have to watch out for. For the most part, we have some adult volunteers doing the flying, um, but we do have some students particularly on what is called the travel line, um, which allows Peter Pan to fly back and forth across the stage. Thanks to Emma from ComTech2 for the insight into this year's stage crew. Senior Jonah Gilbert was selected to the 2023 PMEA All-State Jazz Band. He is one of five trumpet players in the state that were selected. He will meet with the band in April in the Poconos. Congrats, Jonah. Several students also qualified and participated in the Pennsylvania Music Educators Association District 7 Orchestra Festival, with four students that are advancing to the Central Region Orchestra Festival and are all eligible to advance to the All-State Orchestra. The Hempfield bowling team had an excellent season, making it all the way to the semifinals. While they did not make it to the finals, they still have many postseason plans in motion. In Lancaster Lebanon League Wrestling, Hempfield is the 2023 team champion. And in boys swimming, Hemfield took second and third in the 400 meter relay to capture and meet the section champs title. That is all for this month's episode of Hemfield Happenings. I've been Sullivan Fogel. Thank you for watching and tune in next month to see what else is new here at Hemfield.